Hey friends, coming to you from Park City, Utah, here on vacation. Hoping to do some preaching here, though. As you know, Utah is a Mormonism stronghold. There's probably more Mormons in Utah than anywhere else. Many people followed Joseph Smith, Brigham Young, out west. Joseph Smith said he found some gold tablets in New York by an angel, and, and then they were buried somewhere. And it's just, it's just insane that this lie has grown this big. Um, how many people follow this lie? It's just insane. If I was to tell people I found some gold tablets up here on this mountain here and I went down there, I, I don't think anybody would follow me. But somehow people followed him and, uh, you know, his polygamy you know, all his adulterous wives and Brigham Young, his adulterous wives, they just really rallied up a bunch of people that would believe in a lie and follow the ways of the flesh. But I hope to, to preach to people today and uh, while I'm here, um, try to reason with them out of the Word of God, lead them to the truth in Jesus Christ about being born again. There is no other revelation outside of the Word of God. There's not another testament of Jesus Christ. You know, what we have in the Word of God is, is finished, it's final. And Paul even said in Galatians, said if another angel even comes and preaches another gospel than what I preach, you don't listen. And that's what happened. Uh, Joseph Smith listened to an angel more than I and gave him another message, another testament. And gave him all kinds of things that aren't in the Word of God. And I'm not going to get into all the things of Mormonism uh, right now, but there's such a darkness to it. Um, there's a lot of things they don't tell the boys on the bicycles. Um, I've talked to several of the boys on the bicycles about the Word of God. A lot of them, they just didn't know. You know, a lot of the things they believed, they weren't versed in it to know exactly how far it goes. But I, I hope to talk about that a little later. But I'm just here right now. I came up here to, to pray, um, to get alone on this mountain with the Lord. And I just hope to talk to you a little bit. And I want you to see, if you look back here, you can see kind of a little path right there. You know, I was just thinking about things, just thinking about the Word of God. You know, you get out God's creation and a lot of things just start coming to you. And I was looking at this path. You know, this path, it's, it's a narrow path. It's a straight path. It kind of reminds you of the straight, narrow way. There's a lot of rocks on it. A lot of little, like, spiky little bushes and stuff. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough path to, to walk and maneuver. You got to be careful where you put your feet. You know, there's some paths down there where it, you're kind of going through thicket, and I kind of had to go to the right and the left, and you know, try to have, try to find a way. But you know, the Bible says, "Seek ye out the old path, where the Lord may be found." In Jeremiah, and, and I was thinking about that. There have been few that have went before. There have been others that have went this way. We're not trying to go a new path, but there are other holy people that have followed the truth of the Word of God, and we must do the same. We're not trying to invent new things. We're not trying to manipulate things or twist the scripture. We're, but we're trying to follow the truth, abide in the truth, love the truth, you know, walking in the light of the word of God. And that's what this path, it really reminded me of that as I was coming up here. It wasn't an easy journey. It's not easy to climb a mountain. It isn't, you know, this elevation is getting to me a little bit. I'm not used to it. You just got to take it slow. It's not a sprint. But, you know, it, it is a, it's a journey, it's a path, you know, as long as you don't quit, as long as you keep going forward. But, you know, we should want to climb the mountain. You know, the view is, is pretty impressive, you know, when you look around. But, you know, you got to exert yourself. You know, the breeze feels nice, the air is nice, you can breathe and you can see down into the valley. But, you know, it, it doesn't come easy. The things of God do not come easy. You know, whoever told you that it comes easy is wrong. The prosperity gospel is wrong. You know, if, if you, you'll never get a crown without a cross. And you'll never have a testimony without a test. It sounds pretty cliche, but it's the truth. You see, but I, I, was, I was looking out here, you know, I was just thinking about, you know, how, you know, there's all kinds of obstacles in this way. You see all these, like, little trees? All these little trees? Some of those paths, it, it got really, really dense and stuff. And I really had to search it out to find out where I needed to go. Because I didn't want to get jabbed in the eye, stuck with all these sticks. But as you look over here, I'm actually at the summit. I'm at the top of the mountain. You know, it's pretty neat. You see all these stones there? 
See all that? Kind of reminds me, you know, when Moses um, told the children of Israel, or actually it was Joshua, I'm sorry, Joshua told them, whenever they crossed Jordan, he said, uh, you know, build some stones, 12 stones, that when your children ask, what do these stones mean? So you tell them, this is when God, he, he cleared open the Jordan that we would pass over into the land to have victory. And, you know, these stones mean up here that, that people have climbed this mountain. They, they've climbed this summit. They conquered it. They overcame it. They didn't quit. And you know what you do is, you know, you just put a rock up on here, you know. I put this rock right here, this one right there. That's my rock. I put it up there. And I've seen some other places where there's a lot of rocks up there, but this one has a good amount, but it just goes to show you not everybody's putting a rock up here. Not everybody's wanting to climb up here. A lot of people are wanting to walk down there at the bottom, you know. Maybe they climbed it before, but just spiritually speaking, a lot of people want to stay at the bottom of the mount. They don't want to be like Moses. They don't want to climb up. But if you climb up, there's, there's a great sight. It's worth it. You see, and as I'm here, I'm really kind of reminded of you know, in a mountain town, or even in places that are like by the ocean, there's a lot of recreation, a lot of sports, a lot of uh, exercise and fitness. People put so much emphasis on the physical temple, not on the spiritual body, you know, about seeking God. Many people will get up early in the morning to get out and, you know, run, bike. How many people are getting up early to get alone with God, to, to worship the God of all glory that created all this? The Bible says in Romans 1, many would worship and serve the creature rather than the creator. They'd worship this body. They would worship, you know, the gods of this world. They would, you know, worship other things and give their affections and attentions and times to other things rather than to the God that created all of it. I want you to look over here. This is a nice little place over here. Sorry about my camera footage. See that little... I found a little bored here. Made a good seat here. I just came here, spent some time to pray and just listen to God, praise Him and worship Him. My friends, you can go anywhere to do that. I, I just try to look anywhere I go. I look for that opportunity to, to get alone. You know, Jesus went up into a mount to pray and I want to be more like Him. And uh, he rose up a great while before day to seek the face of God and, and to, to be strengthened and charged up. You see, you know, we can't do it alone. We don't have the power and the strength. We don't have the ability to help anybody. We have to be alive in God. We have to be strengthened by the Holy Ghost. It's like that phone that has to be charged. It won't work unless it's charged. We, we got to be charged. You know, I, I ate some food before I came here. I, it was a good thing I did because it was kind of a little difficult I'm I'm out of shape I need to get in better shape and uh the elevation's kind of getting to me a little bit but you know what we, we got to be energized we, we got to prepare for this journey you know it's not just going to come easy and every time Jesus was always getting alone getting alone with the father and that that's a example to us you know Peter got alone on a housetop Isaac went out in the field you know you know Paul you know I mean all these different saints people of God they got alone with God maybe they went by a beach maybe they went on a mountain maybe they maybe they just went in their car in the garage because they just wanted to be able to pray loud where they wouldn't wake their family up wherever you got to go get along with God and worship him and seek his face my friends time is short Jesus is coming so soon take every opportunity you can you know to witness to share Christ I want you to look over here. You see over there? You can see some ski slopes. But what is that? Those are some mountains that are bigger than this mountain that I'm on. Just because you climb one mountain, there's other mountains to climb. Like Caleb said, he said, give me that mountain. He didn't want to just go the easy way with the plane. He said, I don't care if there's giants there. I don't care if it's hard. Give me that mountain. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that. He was 80 years old. Give me the mountain. Are you saying that? Do you want to stay down below? If you climb one mountain, go climb another one. There's times where we are in the valleys. 
Bible says in Psalm 23, the valley of the shadow of death. You don't have to fear any evil. You don't have to be concerned. You don't have to worry because the Lord, He is your strength. The Lord, He's your song. He's your shepherd. He gives you peace and comfort. He'll restore your soul, strengthen you. Because once you go through the valley, He's preparing you to climb a mountain. He's preparing you that you would look further, that you would have a witness you would have a testimony that you would speak the words with power and demonstration of the Lord's Spirit. That you would not be content to settle on yesterday's manna, but that you would eat from the table of God. Be charged in the Spirit of the living God. And walk in the fruitfulness of the Spirit. And be holy unto the Lord God. Be separate unto Him. Obey His words and follow Him. And seek His face while He may be found. The Bible says, Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? But he that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul into vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Thanks for watching.